Hi class, happy Wednesday. It's our virtual day and uh, we're going to start today by doing the daily attendance please. So click the check mark and fill out your form and then we'll go down to this week's folder and we're going to go down to Wednesday. Today is Wednesday the 21st. It's an A day and uh, only first period has the Google Meet. Um, and then you're going to all fill out the daily attendance form for your class period and for lab when you have lab today. Uh, you're going to do a bell ringer and then we're doing something called what's in my kitchen lab. Um, it's only going to take you one period and it's something you have to do at home so that's why I scheduled it for today. Um, please make sure you write down that this, this activity, this lab, is due by Friday. So even though it's not located in your lab folder, it will count as a lab assignment. Um, so it's one of those that really has to get done on time. Um, and as far as lab goes, uh, we will do a Google Meet. And so today is an A day. That means we have lab seventh period. So at 107, I would expect to see you. Um, and I'll talk about what we're doing, but we're doing a daily attendance form and then we have an interactive notes activity. So let's go into Wednesday's folder. Real simple, you've got a bell ringer to complete and then the kitchen lab activity. So you're going to open this with the document or the Kami document viewer um, and answer the questions. You can use your notes uh, from last Friday on macromolecules to help you. If you can't find, you need to have some nutrition labels. Hopefully you've got plenty of nutrition labels that you have at home in your kitchen. If you can't find any, um, I did attach some for you and that's what this link here where it says nutrition labels. Those are some nutrition labels you could use. Uh, but I would recommend using the ones in your house. This is a one period lab. It should not take you very long, um, but you do have until Friday to submit it. So let's take a look at what it is, what it looks like. Okay, so the directions, it says answer the following direction or answer the following questions using your notes and slides from class, using the foods in your kitchen and your knowledge of biology. So first you're going to start out by listing the four macromolecules or the four organic compounds. So you'll use your text box and you'll type those out for me. And then it tells you to observe the nutrition labels of six different fruit foods from your kitchen that you like to eat. Or you can use the nutrition labels that I attached for you. You're going to record the data, the information in the data table below. Um, you're going to write the name of the food, um, the total amount of grams that it has of each of the macromolecules, and notice it doesn't list nucleic acids and that's because that's not really a nutrition source that they count. Um, so they're only measuring carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins in our foods. So it's showing you here um, how to find those. The total fat, you're going to use the total number of grams, total carbohydrate grams, and the protein amount there. And that's where you're getting your information from. So after you fill that in, you're actually going to graph this. You're going to create a graph comparing the different macromolecules found in each of these foods that you selected. Think about the type of graph that we use to compare information. Okay, so this graph is going to be comparing things. Um, you need to label your x-axis down here um, and you're going to label your y-axis. Please make sure you have units and again you're using the text box and remember for the y-axis because it's kind of narrow um, if you're going to we're going to label it um, and I can make it bigger too if I wanted on your Chromebooks you should have a little tool up here in the, the um, toolbar that allows you to turn um, your your text box to the side it'll let you rotate it um, I'm not able to right now uh, but you, you should be able to okay so that's labeling the y-axis with units you need to have an appropriate scale so make sure your numbers are being skipped by like fives tens twenties and it's based off of the information you have here um, you have to be consistent with all of your uh, nutrients here so um, make sure whatever you make sure you note the lowest grams uh, out of all the foods and the highest and your your scale has to incorporate all those numbers um, and then you need a title 
And this title won't necessarily be like the effect of blank on blank. Uh, I'll let you try and figure out what is this title. It, you have to make sure it tells us, you know, what we're what this data is. What is it? What are what are we looking at when you look at the graph? Okay. And then after you've graphed it, you're you're going to answer some questions. It says your digestive system will break down these molecules from your food into smaller molecules called monomers. So now you have to remember what is the monomer of a carbohydrate, the monomer of a protein. Recall the name of the process that breaks down larger molecules called polymers into monomers. What is the process that breaks things down? And then we're going to interpret this graph. It's showing blood sugar levels uh, and the type of food. So you can look at your key here. The red is the carbohydrates and time zero is when you eat it. Okay. Proteins is the green one and then fats is the blue one. Um, and over here it's showing you the level of your blood sugar. Okay. Um, so it's asking you to in interpret the graph of blood sugar levels and the food type to compare carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. So you're going to explain, um, you know, with carbohydrates, within an hour after eating, the blood sugar is at its highest. There are no numbers, so I'm not looking for numbers, but you're going to tell me that it's at the highest level there. And then you'll tell me about proteins and lipids. Tell me about how long it lasts, like your blood sugar levels last after you've eaten that particular food. And then it says predict why it's important to know how different foods will affect a person's blood sugar. So think about that one. Um, based on the graph, what type of macromolecule, so which one of the protein, lipid, or carbohydrate would be best to eat in the morning to give you the most energy through the entire school day and explain what you should eat, okay, and why. And then look at back at your table of six foods. Choose which food would be best to eat to give you the most long-lasting energy through the entire school day. And justify your choice using the sentence starters below. So you're going to say, I claim that blank from your data table would be the ideal food for school. The evidence to support my claim is that the food has blank grams of blank and blank grams of blank, however you, whatever you think is the important information there. And the reason I chose the food is, and then give a really good explanation. Um, and that's it. That's all you've got to do. Um, I think the graph might be the thing that takes you the longest just because you have to use the tools here in Kami um, and manipulate things. I would suggest using a uh, key too. Maybe you want to create a key right here at the top so that um, we can tell the difference between the carbohydrates, the fats, and the proteins. Um, so again, if you have any questions, always remember I'm, I'm available. Email me, send me a remind, and I will get on a Google Meet with you and, and help you with whatever you need. Um, but have fun with this, and it'll be interesting to see what kinds of things you guys are eating. Um, have a great day.